What's up guys, Alberto Big Boost here. Today we're gonna be working on the 1JC that came out of this S14. As you can see here, we have the 1JC GTE non-BVTI engine. This one comes with the twin turbos. There are these really, really tiny turbos. As you can see about the wheels about the same size as my thumb. So we're getting rid of these guys and we're gonna install a single turbo. I already have all the hard part done, so we just have like four or three nuts left holding the turbos in place. So we're gonna remove those real quick. We're gonna install a single turbo manifold. Then we're gonna install the engine back in the car so I can start fabricating all the parts to get this thing going. All right, we're gonna use this rushing 14 millimeter wrench. We're gonna get these nuts out. And now we lift. Let's see how do I grab this the best possible way. All right guys, stock twins out. It's time to put the single turbo in. And here we have our single turbo. We have a dog race exhaust manifold with twin wastegates. Then we have a T4 Twin Scroll Garrett GTX 3076R Turbo Gen 2. This thing's gonna fit there so much nicer. All right, let's see if this thing is gonna fit. I removed one stud and this one's gonna have to be shortened. I just went ahead and removed it so I can test fit the manifold now and then worry about shortening this stud later on. We have the single turbo installed now. It's only been held up by two nuts. We can now drop the engine into the car so I can measure around here. I might have to modify this wastegate, move it a little bit further back and I also, I'm gonna do a aluminum elbow off the turbo so I don't have a coupler on the hot side right here. So I'll do an elbow and I gotta see exactly where is it gonna be pointing at before I make that weld. I put the engine back in the car and I noticed the exhaust manifold does not fit because the front wastegate definitely interferes with the fuse box. So we're getting ready to modify this exhaust manifold. This wastegate from the back side, this is fine. This wastegate that goes to the front does not fit, so I'm going to cut it right at this weld. Then I might be able to just put the wastegate right here, or I might just do an elbow up and have the wastegate up here. First, let's cut this and see if it fits in the engine bay. Let's see if the manifold fits this time. I think that will work. With the exhaust manifold flush, now we can install the turbo and we can start getting our measurements. For the turbo modification, I want to put this elbow pretty much like this. It has to go upwards a little bit so I can clear the coolant line and it's gonna be aiming straight towards the fender hole over here. A quick tack weld and the pipe is exactly how I want it. You can see there's some clearance over here for the coupler. I can still rotate it just a little bit more, but I can't go too far because I have these connections right here for the fuse box. So I have to allow plenty of room for the plugs to plug in there. I can just take this off and finish welding it.
The compressor housing came out perfect. I got it exactly where I wanted. Now we have to modify the exhaust manifold because as we talked earlier, the wastegate that goes to the front hits here. So I'm gonna go up with it. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit more than 90. I have a 90 degree inch and a half elbow here and it's gonna have it pretty much straight. But it's still gonna be very close to the fuse box. So I'm gonna cut this runner right around this line and then I'm gonna add this right about here. So it's closer to the turbo and further away from the fuse box. I did a quick trip with Marco to the dry shaft place and I got a custom dry shaft being made for this car. So it's gonna be a one piece design instead of a factory two piece design dry shaft that was previously installed on this. Not only am I getting the wastegate rerouted, but I'm also changing the size. Instead of using dual 44s, I'm gonna use dual 38. So in this case, they're gonna be dual 40s. We're gonna be using the Turbo Smart Comp Gate 40 millimeter wastegates instead of using the Hypergate 45 millimeter wastegates. Dual 40 millimeter wastegate is more than enough to regulate the boost on this thing up to a thousand horsepower, so there's no need to go dual 45s. So dual 40s is gonna do it just right. I already semi polished this pipe, so I have it lined up with these little lines here. So we're gonna weld this right here just like this. You can see I already beveled this too, so I can get full penetration on these welds. So you wanna have like that V-shaped configuration. And this is what we're mining for is gonna look like. So I have the wastegate routed upwards on this side. Then I have the correct flange welded on, well, tag welded on this side. Then tomorrow we're gonna come back and finish weld on this thing and reinstall it on the car. All right guys, we're back. And then we're gonna weld the exhaust manifold. Before I weld this manifold, I wanna show you guys one really cool tool that I got from the guys over at TurboSmart to weld this even nicer. As you guys know already, when you're welding stainless steel, you need to back purge what you're welding. So you will need to seal off the runners and seal off everything and purge argon gas inside the tube while you're also shielding the weld on the outside with your torch. The guys over at TurboSmart sent me this really cool new product. So they have welding purge bunks for wastegates. So these little guys are gonna go right on the wastegate flanges so not only will it allow me to back perch the weld but it'll also keep the flange straight so it doesn't warp while i'm welding the flange to the pipe let's open these guys so i can show you what i'm talking about here we have the comp gate 40 this is the one that we're gonna use on our wastegate so the full minute 40 millimeter wastegate also works on tile 38, so it's pretty handy. So this is gonna go right on the wastegate flange, like this. So it goes here, you're gonna use your clamp. So you're gonna clamp this together. First I have to obviously open this clamp top. You will notice it has also a smaller size. So this one is for the wastegate outlet. So the bigger side mates with the bottom side and the smaller side mates with the smaller side so you can also back purge the outlet tube and also even if it's not just back purging but at least to keep the flange from warping you can clamp this to your dump tube while you're welding it and it will not deform then for my 45 millimeter waste gates or the hyper gates i have the 45 millimeter waste gate welding perch bunks i'm going to install this here like this put the clamp over it Somehow, okay, I'll loosen it a little bit more. There. Or just remove the whole clamp altogether, you know. We clamp it tight. Then you will notice we have a little baggie with fittings and plugs. You can put a fitting to feed argon gas into the flange. Or if you're running two or you're purging from other place, you can also put a plug. So in this case, I can purge from this side. And on this wastegate over here, I can put a plug on the other side. That way I'm just feeding the manifold through one side so that argon doesn't escape the other side. Here we have both well purge plugs installed, but we have a unique situation here. This is a true twin scroll exhaust manifold with dual wastegates. So there's three runners going separately to one side with a wastegate and then we have three runners on the other side 
also to this side with a wastegate. If I push on this side, argon gas is not going to flow into this side, so it's only going to stay over here if I put a cap here. The only way will be to like put something where I can like recirculate this to here. So I'm going to weld one side at a time, this cap here, cap these three runners, and then I can weld this side. Then I can take the hose off from this side, connect it over to this side, weld this side separately from the other one. I made a T4 block of play with some scrap aluminum that I had. It's drilled four holes. That way I'm able to cap this. I didn't want to put tape here because it's going to be really hot. I am able to put tape on this side because the heat won't reach all the way over here. But if you put tape here with the heat welding right here, it's definitely going to melt all the glue on the tape and potentially just make the tape catch on fire. We got our connection right here for the purge. We're going to go ahead and open the bottle. You can hear the gas flowing. And now we're gonna weld. Is out of the car again now I have it on the engine stand I'm stripping out the engine harness then I'm gonna remove the intake manifold so I can get this all cleaned up and ready for powder coating as well as the valve covers are gonna get powder coated so it's gonna be intake manifold valve covers and turbo compressor housing which is not there it's on the table over there but those are gonna get powder coated I'm also removing everything that we're not going to be using out of the factory engine components. I got all the emission stuff. I'm moving the intake manifold flange now so I can remove the harness from the intake manifold since we have also like a couple little bolts that are on the inside there. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. We removed the intake manifold one. Now we have this mid section here that the fuel rail mounts onto. Since I am gonna use a different fuel rail, I'm gonna go ahead and take the fuel rail off from this now while it's still kind of held up to the intake or the intake side of the head. It sound right, boy. Intake manifold is completely off, so the engine is ready to get pressure washed and clean all this gunk up from it before I continue working on everything else. Now I can remove the engine harness from the intake manifold, that way I can completely remove everything here and I can send it up to powder coating. <laughs> 